Welcome to Luthier's Tips and Tricks. This is the second in what will be a weekly or thereabouts series of short videos to accompany our podcast and newsletter options. Uh, check out the podcast. That is an hour long or thereabouts. Um, question and answer video podcast where you ask the questions and I answer. And uh, go and have a look at the Crimson Guitars Guild uh, which is our online guitar building school. A lot of free content and then some uh, premium stuff which helps support us and keep these videos coming. And uh, go and subscribe to the weekly newsletter which is essentially an amalgamation of uh, each week's content. So it will give you links to whatever videos we've created and uh, bits and pieces of news and new tools and jigs and things that are coming out of the Crimson Guitars Lethe's supply store. However, this week we are going to talk about laying out and working out what a neck break angle or what neck break angle should be for your custom instrument. It's a question that I'm asked continuously and no matter how many times I've tried to explain it in words, uh, it comes out garbled and strange and nobody understands what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, in the end, whether this is going to be your first or hundredth custom guitar build, you will always need a full set of 100% real size accurate plans for what you are planning on building. If you do not plan ahead, you will fail. You will, you will screw up the neck break angle. Uh, you'll put the bridge in the wrong place, a pickup will be unaligned, or uh, your headstock won't work. I have done all of the above and I have cried repeatedly sometimes even after I have drawn plans. So I suppose the moral is measure, measure, cut. Be careful. Anyhow, I am going to go through the process of drawing up an imaginary guitar here, uh, at least the side profile, which is what we are worried about. And uh, I'm afraid it's going to be a rather boring piece of white paper. So here we go. Okay, blank piece of paper. When you are drawing a guitar from the front, you always start with a center line. Uh, there is no such real rule when you are building, when you're drawing something from a, a side profile. However, a good place to start, quite possibly, would be the string. So, uh, I'm using a sort of permanent marker here just to make sure that you can actually see what I draw. I've done this in pencil before and it hasn't worked. Okay, so a string. That's the nut. And let us go for a, well, this is a Gibson style guitar, so 629 mil scale. Okay, this is the nominal scale length, i.e. that is position where the center of your bridge needs to sit. Okay, and, uh, and everything else is worked out from here. Now, I really don't like drawing in such a, an imprecise tool, because I can't really measure things. Anyhow, we have got our scale length, we've got our nut. You need to work out where the end of your fretboard is going to be. Let's pull out a book and figure out a scale length. Uh, <coughs> let's pull out a book and figure out where the end of our fretboard is going to be. Now, 629 mil scale. Uh, let's go with 21 frets. So, 44175. Here's the end of our fretboard or at least that's the last fret. So the end of the fretboard is gonna be five mil further. And uh, I'll do these in permanent marker now. So you need to consider several things here. You need to think about your fret height, which let's say is gonna be about two millimeters. You need to consider the fact that you want a, another two millimeters uh, above your fret so that your string can actually vibrate. 
Again, these are broad strokes. Some people like, the, like it higher and some, some lower. So essentially, if you give yourself in your plans five millimeters of leeway, yeah, you'll be okay. So that's about there. And essentially, that line is now, very roughly, the top of our fretboard. Fretboard is six to seven millimeters tall. Okay. Now, you go and get yourself a lovely aeronautical protractor, because I love nice tools, and figure out a rough brake angle. Okay, let's just go with that just for fun. Oh, no, that's wrong. Okay. Ignore me. You're crashing, Will Robinson. Well, there's a headstock. I want a volute. Incidentally, the volute should uh, never be on this side of the nut line. Okay. Now, so far, this has very little to do with the neck brake angle, which is what everybody's worried about. However, now we get to the fun part. At the bridge, you've got, on this instrument, a tunematic style uh, bridge. And that is about 14 millimeters big in real life. And then again, you want some, uh, some leeway. So give yourself another five millimeters, or what's five millimeters in inches? Uh, quirky. I'm not even gonna say that because I don't know, quarter of an inch or more, <laughs> thereabouts. Uh, you want to give yourself some leeway so that you can move your bridge up and down and not be stuck or, or left having to route a cavity underneath it. Again, this is something that has happened to me. But let's say, let's say 17 millimeters. That gives me three millimeters of downwards motion and obviously as high as I want to go. So if I put the bridge all the way flat down to the body, that'll be three millimeters lower than my projected string position. And that's there. So it's a very rough tunematic. Now, if you are doing a tremolo, for example, one of our custom ball bearing trims, that is bigger than a normal trim, but smaller than a, a tunematic. So those, you'd need about a 12 millimeter uh, position. So that would be there. Now, what we have worked out is how low our bridge needs to be off the body. And that is our last fret. What is our 16th fret? Because every guitar, I sound like I'm lecturing now, crikey. Put me in front of a whiteboard or a piece of paper and, and, and I turn into a university lecturer. This is crazy. Uh, 379.17. I just want to know where the 16th fret is. Because that is generally where a guitar body joint happens. And I'm going to roughly draw in a neck here. And this is where we work out that fantastically difficult and com confusing concept of neck break angle. There's where it joins the body. There's where I want it to be at the bridge position. There's the angle. Oh my God, I've done it. And I don't know what the angle is. <laughs> but it doesn't actually matter. It, it's um, four degrees, probably. Uh, judging by history, yeah, three degrees, four degrees, it's hard to tell when you're drawing with a felt tip. And essentially, that is it. Now, the confusing part is figuring out where to start your line. I've started this one at the 16th fret. Sometimes 
if I'm using an, an inch thick top, I'll start the line here and then carve the top flat down to there. Um, that is just personal choice. But in the end, what we have here is, is a drawing to follow. I've, the other day I had a rant at uh, one of the apprentices. He turned around and uh, he'd worked something out on a piece of paper um, with, to do with putting, it was a bridge, he wanted to put a bridge in a particular place and he'd done some maths. And his workings out were wrong. His mathematics itself, he'd added something, put a decimal point somewhere, and it, it crashed and burned. And I said, don't do mathematics. Do a drawing. If you can see it and it looks right, <laughs> then it's fine. You can't... And, and I was incredibly angry, and it's the same thing with this. You need to do a drawing and copy a drawing. A lot of people um, want to be engineers and they want to be absolutely precise and know that it's a 4.3 degree angle and get out, your, um, get out your feeler gauges and all of that. And a lot of times it's not necessary. And essentially I now have something that I can copy, I can make a template and go away and make this guitar with no problems and without having to resort to a protractor or, or to a calculator. Um, it might help you to know that uh, I failed my GCSE accounts exam and I didn't go to my GCSE maths exam because I didn't want two Fs. I am not a mathematical type. I'm a practical person, <laughs> I'd like to think. Anyhow, so, so this is what it would look like with a tunematic bridge. And I'm going to just go on top with a different colour If I can find one. Oh, here's a blue. Does that make? No, it looks exactly the same. Uh, if we are going to go for a 12 mil bridge like the Chinomatic, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Tremolo, then essentially Oh, I'm ruining my ruler here. In that case, that there would be my neck break angle. And it's a completely different guitar, different angle, but that's all you need to really know. There we have it. I hope that I've enlightened you somewhat. And, uh, well, if there's one thing you need to take away from this, it's go away and draw some plans and draw more plans and draw more plans. And uh, if at all possible, make them to scale and... Uh, it's well worth doing. Uh, I used to go to car boot sales and buy people's offcuts of uh, wallpaper. Um, everybody always buys one or two rolls too much. Um, and uh, yeah, I just had rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls of wallpaper and I used those to draw, to draw my guitars on. And uh, inevitably you learn as much going through the design process as you do um, building the thing. It's uh, sort of. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go and check out the Crimson Online Guitar Building School. It's the, the guild. Uh, we've got a huge, vibrant forum with oh, something like a thousand members now, uh, all talking about guitar building and repairs and the like. And, uh, and uh, I appreciate your support and... Have a great day. Go forth and build guitars. Cheers.